Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as now it's time for today's Toy of the Week video. And as the weeks roll by, then I hope it's becoming clear that I'm attempting to bring you a wide range of classic toys from the franchise, and offer up as much variety as possible. And in that spirit, there are weeks like this when you just know that it's time for something truly weird and wonderful. Now, this is a toy that never fails to cause comment when it's shared online, so I really hope that you'll enjoy an extended look at the one and only truly noteworthy Generation 1 Shining Magnus. Takara C69 Shining Magnus was released back in the year 2000 as a reissue of the original Ultra Magnus toy, though with a rather unique colour scheme. It was an exclusive to the 20th Century Toy Museum show, held at the Mitsukoshi department store in Yokohama, Japan, and was limited to just 800 copies overall. Despite its small production numbers, Shining Magnus was quite widely available for surprisingly low value for years, such was the lack of desirability around the release to begin with. That's all changed in more recent times, however, with the rather eccentric reissue having since become an object of appeal to many, and the prices have increased dramatically as a result. It's not hard to see why a colour scheme like this could be polarising mind, although these days it's certainly earned a more favourable reputation alongside its infamy as an outlandish alternate version of the original toy. Shining Magnus is of course a repaint of the original Generation 1 Ultra Magnus toy, which was itself a hugely popular and arguably quite iconic example from the first few years of the franchise. The original version itself was also reissued in 2000, with a second exclusive redeco following a year later, which instead homaged the design's diaclone roots by recreating its pre-Transformers colour scheme. It's fair to say that this trio of toys makes quite the impression on any collector's shelf, although Shining Magnus stands out as by far and away the most eye-catching example overall. That's largely due to the translucent yellow plastic trailer, no doubt, which never fails to draw attention of all kinds whenever it's showcased. In vehicle mode, it contrasts superbly well with the opaque yellow and dark blue cab section, which is of course itself a repaint of the original Optimus Prime toy. The translucent effect brings out all the minute detail inherent in the trailer's design, and honestly looks nothing shy of superb when you have it in hand. Like the original Ultra Magnus design, there are a pair of spring-loaded missile launchers on the front of the trailer, ready for activation at a moment's notice. The front of the cab can be pulled down to reveal a small interior section of sorts, harkening back to the days of Diaclone when there would have been a small driver figure available to sit in here. It's not the only example of this toy's origins being on show mind, with the Ultra Magnus design being one of the more memorable examples from childhood for creating intrigue by the clear absence of its humanoid companions. One of the toy's most notable gimmicks is that the trailer can house a number of Generation 1 carbots, making it one of only a few examples from the original Transformers line that is compatible with other toys in this way. Should you prefer, then the toy was also originally designed to work with some of the Seeker molds too, adding a bit of cross-faction play value to the proceedings. Even as a standalone piece, there's little doubt that Shining Magnus brings a real presence in his vehicle form, never failing to draw your attention in his direction. In terms of transformation, the first port of call is that cab section, which will be an instant dose of nostalgia for anyone already familiar with the classic Optimus Prime design. It's an unmistakably enjoyable process, and one of the truly timeless examples from the franchise. Although you still have to be careful not to lose the fists, of course. Once you have the cab transformed, you're left with the palpable presence of a yellow Optimus Prime figure, which some might say is one of the major draws of this release overall. The Optimus design has been cast in any number of different hues over the years, but this one undoubtedly ranks as one of my personal favourites.
Interestingly, it's the first but not the only example of a yellow Optimus repaint out there, although it's far from being a trend even today. The cab robot can be equipped with the main blaster weapon for this release, which is also cast in the same translucent yellow as the trailer section. The trailer can then be converted to a kind of repair bay mode, as well as one or two other choice configurations along the way. Really though, it's time for the main event, which involves transforming the trailer into that idiosyncratic robot form we all know and love. Of course it pays to take some care with this clear plastic part of the toy along the way, before converting the cab section and plugging it into the back. Then it's just a matter of arming Magnus with his missiles and other weapons, not to mention the helmet-like main robot head before you're done. All of that leaves us with one of the most memorable robot forms from the original iteration of the franchise, all decked out in a face-melting variety of pure, unadulterated yellow. The final look is one that collectors either admire for all it's worth, or snort at with extreme disgust. There is no in-between as far as Shining Magnus goes, it seems. Still, a toy like this clearly wasn't made to be bland, so whatever your reaction to it, then there's little doubt that it's a bold statement waiting to be heard. But where does the inspiration for a design like this come from, anyway? Well, it's actually a homage to the 1986 Transformers animated movie, which rather notoriously depicts the death of iconic Autobot leader Optimus Prime. I shall be one with the Matrix. In the film, Optimus passes the Autobot Matrix of leadership to Ultra Magnus as the new leader, causing the whole room to be cast in a bright light. The big screen adventure itself depicts the light as being blue, but in the Marvel comic adaptation, you can quite clearly see that it's shown as being yellow, despite the Matrix itself now looking like a lump of green coal for some reason. Even if the Marvel connection is potentially a little tenuous, the packaging for Shining Magnus also refers to this legendary moment in fiction as being the inspiration for the toy's design. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Shining Magnus isn't actually equipped with a copy of the Matrix himself, meaning that if you look closely enough then you'll see an empty chamber section inside the robot mode chest. Of course, you can use a number of different Matrix designs to work with him should you wish, with perhaps my favourite example being the accessory from the New Year Special Convoy reissue from 2002. With that in place, Magnus can now fully live up to his potential as the glorious new leader of the Autobot ranks, shining a beacon of hope for his loyal troops. It may be a rather niche inspiration for an exclusive toy of this kind, but there's still no doubt that the people behind it have a lot of love for the franchise. Really though, whatever this toy's origins, it's just quite simply one of the most breathtaking and certainly one of the most unique takes on a Generation 1 design that I can think of. It may not be to everyone's tastes, but this is one Transformers release that simply commands to be seen. So look. I'd be remiss if I didn't discuss the naming of this toy, right? I mean, yes, it's commonly known as Shining Magnus, or even Matrix Glow Magnus if you prefer, but there are a number of rather more unfortunate nicknames floating around out there as well, such as Urine Magnus, or the rather more graphic Piss Magnus. Whatever you want to call him though, there's little doubt that he's the mother of all stunners in hand, and for my money sits along stuff like the equally breathtaking Fire Guts God Jinrai as being some of the finest reissued designs we ever received from the original line. I'd love to have seen them do more like this, to be honest. Anyway, I'm happy for what we got, and so Shining Magnus is our Toy of the Week. A big thank you for watching, and indeed to everyone who's subscribed to the channel so far. Big gratitude also to all my Patreon supporters, details of which are coming up at the end of the video in just a moment. Otherwise, that's it from me, so enjoy the rest of your day. TTFN. <laughs> <laughs>